got a good mind to drop these dishes. You got a good mind? Oh, it's six o'clock already, and the tomato's still out there parading for the seagulls. Putting dishes away is her job. Ain't it enough that I do the cooking and the cleaning? Every time I talk about the tomato, you get busy. The tomato's got a name, Cotty. Everybody's got a name. Yeah? Then how come you call me Slav and my name's really Leo? Because you look like a Slav. Even when you're clean, you look dirty. That, to me, is not a Leo. That is a Slav. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah, funny, very. You're laughing at me in the bankruptcy. Why did you do it? Look what he did. He's crazy. But you're not going to get away with it. See, you're going to get me a new one. I'm going to get you nothing. All right, come on, lay off. Do that again, I'll whack you good. You raise a hand to her and I'll make you eat it. Yeah, I'd like to see that. No, no, I was only having fun. So am I. I'm going to teach you a lesson. Next time I'm in San Diego, I'm going into the best store, and I'm going to get the best petticoat, and you're going to pay for it. You got a fat chance. You want to bet? I'll let you in on a little secret. I'm going to take it out of your salary. How do you like that? Then I'll go to the labor board. Well, I'm for that, and when you're there, ask him to get you a new job. Well, it's easy to see who you got eyes for, huh? Too bad I wasn't born a tomato. Too bad you were born, period. Hi, George. Here, catch. Oh, is this the one about the seashells? I think you'll find it interesting. The book better have a lot of pictures in it. I can read as good as you. You can't do nothing good. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, what brought on this chain reaction? Toddy's petticoat. Look at what Slob did to it. What'd you do this for? I don't know. I, I just felt like it. It's a stupid answer. Well, figures it's coming from a stupid place. Oh, you shut up. Oh, what's everybody making such a big thing for? You think the tomato is a queen? As far as you're concerned, she is. If you're looking for trouble, I can give it to you. Anything you start with Cotty, you're gonna have to finish with me. Now, you go back to your greasy griddle. Well, I hope you're happy, you troublemaker, you. There's only one thing could make me happy. I'll outlive you two to one. Never mind the odds. Buy her a new petticoat. And behave yourself. Who is it? What do you want? Oh, Sam, I thought it was... Come on in. How's my girl? Fine, don't I look it? You look just great. Slav's gonna buy you a new petticoat. If I told you what he did to me on the beach... I heard all about it out there. No sense going through it again. Slav's got an eight-cylinder body and a two-cylinder mind. You gotta consider the source. Good. He's not gonna bother you anymore. Now let's talk about something worthwhile. I'm all for that. I think I know the first two chapters by heart. Well, you're really serious about taking this civil service exam. I don't want to be a waitress for all my life. I want you to be proud of me. I am, and you don't have to be anything but exactly what you are. Just you wait until I pass that examination. Instead of coming to see me in this broken down beanery, you'll, you'll walk into a great big beautiful government building and I'll be sitting behind a big desk doing... Doing something important? Uh-huh. <laughs> something important. You know, the longer I know you, the more you amaze me. Tell me something. Anything, Sam. Anything. One of the first ten amendments to the Constitution called. Bill of Rights. That's right. What form of government is this? The best. <laughs> it's a very good answer, but it's not the right one. This is a republic. Isn't that the best? It sure is. Sam, there's so much to learn. Sometimes I feel I'll never make it. <laughs> oh, you're doing real great. You tell me something else. What? You know what branches does the Constitution divide the governmental powers? Judicial? Legislative? Executive? Oh, I wish there were more branches. What's with you? What, are you saw because I'm a champion? If you hadn't caught me with a full belly, I'd have killed you. You want to kill me now? 
Yeah. It'd be my pleasure. These are nice fat fish. I'm sure you know why. They come from Mexican waters. You can't catch anything off this coast. It's all fished out. This one looks like you. Mr. Gregory, happy with me? Sure, sure. Will you guys cut out all that dish and, and you get out of here and let Slav finish his work? You don't have to hit me in the head. I can take a hint. See you again, Slav. Hey, let's you and me get to get on my night off. Maybe we'll get us a couple of hot dishes, huh? Yeah, I'm your boy. You get them, I'll go. Whatever you two could get, they don't let out at night. What were you guys whispering about in here? Well, us? Nothing. Now, uh, don't give me that. I'm wise to you guys. You're both trying to pull a fast one. With the fish. I don't have to take no insults from you. Tell them, boy. Tell them good. Will you shut your trap and get out of here? Ho, ho, ho. You know, if it wasn't so hard to get a cook way out here, I'd have bounced your head out that front door long ago. Then we're even. Because if I wasn't such a lousy cook, I would have walked out of here a long time ago. Georgie! Hey, Eddie! Welcome home! Welcome oh, home, my boy! <laughs> hey, you look like a million. How's the old love, sir? Like a mother-in-law, nagging me night and day. Come on, sit down. Tell us how the world is treating you. Ain't you gonna ask me how I feel? Why should he? The only thing will kill you is time. Hey, that reminds me. About that watch you sold me. I'll give it to you wholesale. What else do you want? I want what it says in the guarantee, and the guarantee says if it's busted, you gotta give me a new one. Dreamboat here only reads the large print. Yes, Lot, that's right. All them guarantees is the same. The big print gives you everything, and the little print takes it away. Yo, I don't care. You said it didn't have to be wine, and I could leave it in water overnight, and it wouldn't hurt. That I did. But even an impartial jury will agree that water is not soup, especially hot onion soup. When I examined your watch, it had pepper, cheese, and a piece of onion in it. Furthermore, it looked to me as if it had been cooked over a slow fire all night. Why didn't you tell me you dropped it in a soup? A man's entitled to privacy. Not in my soup! Will you do me a favor? I don't want to be aggravated before I eat. Now, chop it! What do you, you think you, you could get away with all... You heard what the man said, chop it. What'd you have, then? I've had a taste of your hamburger in my mouth all the way down from Pismo Beach. What do you want on it? Everything. Except your watch. Big comic, huh? A lot of things I could put on that hamburger. You wouldn't. Hey, Slob, not even in a joke, huh? One burger. Coming up. Hey, it's my friend, the Brain. Eddie. <laughs> How's the number one salesman? Uh, it's number three now. This territory is getting a little tired. How are you doing? Uh, oh, I forgot. You can't talk about it. But I'll bet you're still top man in the cyclotron department, huh? Number one in the love department, too. Oh, that I know. Tell me something new. How's the chickie? She's great, Eddie. She's going to be very happy to see you. You're one of her favorite people. Naturally, with my charm. Why not, huh? Eddie looks real good, don't he? Looks better than the last time. How do you feel? Oh, well, I, I think I'm proven. Too bad you can't stay around a while. I can recommend a good psychiatrist. Ah, who needs those head shrinkers? You're good enough for me. Every time I talk to you, I feel like a new man. Very flattering, Eddie, but you need professional help. Armchair well, sure psychology is not enough. Look, Professor, I got friends who've been going for years. I still eat bird seed. So you're not a talking doctor. Eddie's got confidence in you. And it's very important to me. I know, all I know is you tell me what to do. When I do it, I feel better. You know something? If you were to tell me to jump off a building, I'd take off like a jet job. Hey, you remember what you told me about physical therapy? Look, I even got a sports catalog. It's got all the stuff that George and I need for our vacation. Acapulco, here we uh, come. See, here's the flippers down here. And the underwater masks. Sure, it's got everything for skin diving. Boy, these snorkels look good. Where's the uh, harpoons? 
No. Here. Look for yourself. Those sharp prongs. Gruesome. Even on paper, it makes me sick when I think of the poor fish. Eddie, there you go again. Now, why did I recommend skin diving? I told you the fish are cold-blooded. This I want to hear straight from the fish's mouth. All right, I'll arrange a meeting. You know, these elastic-driven harpoons are effective, but the ones with the carbon dioxide have more power. For big game fish, rust-proof, non-slip handles. Yeah, but look at that crazy price. What do they think we skin divers are, millionaires? Relax, George. I met a sporting goods salesman. Sold him a watch wholesale. In return, he's showing his appreciation by giving me his cost. Take him out. That's for you, Ed. Eddie, baby! Chicky, how's the living oh. going? <laughs> Gee, I've missed you. How long are you going to stay this time? Well, I get some business. Oh, don't you work too hard. You're looking real yeah. good. <laughs> How do you like that? I own the joint. I pay the salaries. Nothing like that ever happens to me. <laughs> That's because you don't sell jewelry. You better be careful, Eddie. Cotty must have her eye on something. Chicky can have anything I got. Wholesale. You extravagant boy. Eat your hamburger <laughs> before it gets cold. I gotta get going, Cotty. I'll walk you out. Be right back. Take your time, you will, anyway. Put the coffee on my tab, George. See you soon. Don't worry, I'll be around for some more of those free treatments. Atta boy, Eddie. Bye, slob. Good night, Professor. What do you say, Cot? Hi, Artie. Hey, how's the dog? Floating, Peppy. You guys, cut it out. Well, what's the matter with you? We were only looking. Well, for your information, this ain't no museum. Really? Then how do you explain those antique French donuts you serve? Oh, very funny. How are you, fellas? How's the chicken business? It's for the birds. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say, Slav? What could he say that would be interesting? <laughs> well, fellas, what'll it be? I'll have an Egyptian dancing girl. Yeah, me too. Sorry they're out of season, but how about cherry pie and coffee? As if I didn't know. You talked us into it. You getting any action? Ah, uh, business has been lousy. Last time the cash register rang, I answered the phone. You ever try serving decent food? Sometimes it helps. Oh, that's clever. Oh! Ow! What is it? Well, what do you think it is? Looks like the buckle off a wristwatch band. Oh, slob. Did you lose this? Where'd you find it? Where you put it? You need a witness? We'll be glad to help. Oh, thanks. It's very neighborly of you. What is this, an automobile accident or something? Nobody got killed. I don't see any stiffs laying around. There will be. Just give him time to digest his sandwich. What do you do? You guys gain weight from aggravating me. What do you want from my life? You're sure a sorehead, George. I only ribbon you. boyfriend really sends you. He must be quite a guy. You have no idea. He's wonderful and smart, too. I don't know how I read a professor. What's so great about that? My sister's married to a school teacher. Look, my chicken-picking friend, Sam doesn't teach one and one is two. He's a scientist, a nuclear physicist. Boom! He's a big, big man. No, oh, I'm not impressed. If he's such a big wheel, why isn't he in Los Alamos with the rest of the Atom Smashers? You're a real dope. Don't you know that little bunch of buildings up the highway where Sam experiments is one of the most important universities in the whole world? That hunk of ivy, what can he do there? He's not allowed to tell me. Mm, what a stinker. If you were my girl, I'd tell you everything. Hey, what are you doing tomorrow night? You'll never know because you won't be there. Come on, Cot, get a girl for me and we'll double date. Tomorrow's payday. Cut it out. Hey, give us a break. We'll show you a good time. Get your hands off her, I'll belt you. You'll have to belt both of us. Well, don't think I can't. All right, you knock off. You stay out of this, Ed. You've been sick. Now, please, look, what do you guys want to fight for? Who wants to fight? He started it. You know what I think? I think you're on the hook for Cotty. I ain't interested in what you think. Now, pick up your tabs and haul carcass out of here. Oh, no, oh, look, I'm sorry, fellas. I didn't mean to roust you. Here. Next time, coffee's on me. Make it a steak and the romance will be on again. I ain't interested in the honeymoon. Coffee or nothing. Okay, but for coffee, don't expect the full treatment. So long, George. See you. So long. So long.
What are you thinking about? No, I'm just thinking. You want to talk? About what? Yeah, I guess you're right. What's there to talk about when the guy with your sense of humor forgets how to laugh? Will you get off my back? Well, I, I'm sorry, Eddie. You're the last guy I should blast. I'm the first. George, ain't I your best friend? Go ahead, blast. Ah, what's the use? It's all a bunch of slop. You're just finding that out? Life's 90% walking through slop to get to the roses. I'll buy that, but when do I get the smell? Oh, brother, you sure got a short memory. How long ago was D-Day? You got a lot to be grateful for. Did you ever see two guys with more holes in them? I still remember how choppy the channel looked through your chest. Yeah, they never thought we'd make it, did they? We showed him. You still think about it? Only when I sleep. Hey, George, you know what I think? I think maybe you ought to sell this place. Maybe it's getting too much for you. Sell what I've wanted all my life? Never. Say, I've been all over the world. It's nothing. Look at what I got here. I got the mountains in my front yard, the ocean in my backyard, doors open all the time for people to come in. I'm the host, and they pay me for it. Ah, that's not the trouble. Cotty? I'm on a hunker I can't get off. Artie was right. I thought that was over a long time ago. No, no, it's worse than that. <sighs> the poor guy. You haven't got a chance and you know it. Even if you were Cary Grant, she wouldn't give you a second look. George, the whole thing's chemistry. She's A, the professor's B. You just don't fit in the formula. I know. A character like me should know his place. That's the way to talk. Well, the best thing for two guys like us to do is to forget all about women and look for adventure. Look who's talking about adventure. You're scared of your own shadow. That's not true. Only thing that still gets me is blood and violence. Oh, now, come on, relax. It's going to be just like the professor said. You're going to get rid of that phobia. We're going down to Acapulco, have plenty of adventure, excitement, and you'll come back a new man. Your mouth into my ego. George, give me your hand. What are you going to do? Tell my fortune? Eddie, give me yours. Maybe his hand didn't feel like yours, more like Eddie's. It's funny, a truck driver with soft hands. Will you? Okay. You're a little late today, ain't you? Yeah. Hey, that looks great. That's a beautiful looking set of muscles. How many times have I told you not to call them muscles? You want to sound like an amateur? Call them pecs. Well, what's the difference? Big deal. The fact is, you got them. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna tell you, you have them too. If you'd only work out. A couple of licks and you quit for the day. I'm very happy with my pets. We're closed. We don't open till six o'clock. I don't know why people don't eat at home. Every time I eat, I get sick. You don't have to tell me nothing about restaurant food. Hey, listen, slob. I ordered another set of barbells. Want to go have these with me? Well, don't I always? Oh, that's great. This is Charlie Strongtree's latest invention. He says it uh, develops the latissimus, you know? Yeah, we're both a little weak in that department. Yeah, well, he says two weeks of that, and we'll be the envy of Muscle Beach. Hey, won't them tomatoes go for us, huh? Look, I, hey, hey, I do it for no tomato. I do this for myself. You wouldn't believe it. You know, Slob, at one time I was so skinny, I was embarrassed to undress in front of myself. I see what you mean. But you know, it's one thing, I don't go for those guys on Muscle Beach. The waist is so thin, there's no room for any food. Yeah, those idiots. They're way over the top, you know? Yeah. Who wants to go around walking in a leopard skin all the time, anyway? Those guys can't wear clothes. Hey, I look pretty good in a suit, though, don't I? No kidding. Yeah, great. Especially that double-breasted brown job. What about me? Well, your clothes don't do too much for you. Hey, feel this. That's pretty hot. But it is hard as mine. It's a matter of opinion, huh? Hey, but you won't argue about these legs. Get those. What's wrong with mine? Ah, they're soft, flabby. If you did what I told you to do, you'd have legs like mine. 
Well, let's forget about the legs. I don't care about them anyway. They don't show. You know what I really want? A big, thick neck. I think you'd do better concentrating on the legs. I don't know how you even get around. I don't know how you walk. Don't you want a set of legs like mine? Oh, I go for your triceps and your biceps. They look great, but I wouldn't have your legs if you had given them to me. Well, I ain't giving you nothing. As far as I'm concerned, you can go around on those pins for the rest of your life. There you go, getting sore again. A guy can't be honest around here. Hey, no, Cotty! Don't look! Okay, now, Cot. Cotty, we want you to do us a favor. We want you to judge a contest. We want you to decide who's got the best-looking legs in this establishment. And just because he's the boss, don't play favorites. All right. Which one of us got the best? In this establishment, I have. I got a sneaking hunch she's been using our barbells. What's wrong, Cut? Are you unhappy? I don't know. I keep thinking crazy things. One minute I'm up in the cloud, and then I get so low I could die. Did you get bad news from home? Oh, no, nothing like that. Then what is it? Looks like my girl's keeping secrets from me. Me? That's funny. You're the one. What does that mean? Hey, but I don't want to talk about it. It's not like you. You always speak your mind. Now, come on. What is it? What's wrong? That's just what I want to know. Sam, you've changed. We used to be together all the time. Now I only see you when you come to the shack. And then you spend most of your time talking to Slav and looking at shells. Don't tell me you're jealous of Slav. If it weren't for him, I never would have met you. No, it's something else. Come on, tell me. What is it? Sam, when is the last time you took me to dinner? When did we last go dancing? I've been busy, you know that. As good an excuse as any, but I think I know the real reason. You're ashamed to be seen out in public with me. It wouldn't be nice for a famous professor whose picture's on the cover of a big magazine to be seen out with a hash slinger. What will people say? You honestly believe that I give a hang what strangers think? You think I'm impressed because a magazine decided to make a hero out of a scientist? You know better than that. I'm just a lucky guy who's got a job that he likes, and because I like it, I spend a great deal of time with it. And I'm not going to change my way of life for you or anybody else. I guess I've been told. I'm going to continue to tell you, just so long as you act like a little girl. Don't be so emotional. Why, I'm not ashamed of it. I am emotional, I am jealous, and I want attention. And like you, I have no intention of changing my way of life to please you or anybody else. Of course I am. Well, I don't suppose there's anything I can do about that. That's right. Absolutely nothing. Hmm. Well, you are so wrong. That's George. He's back from the market. I'll go see him. Hey, Professor. 
I didn't know you was around. Boy, did I have luck tonight. Take a look. Mm. Pretty good, huh? The tide was low and it was laying all over the place. All right, there's one for my collection. Looks like we'll do some business tonight. Better get your money ready. Hi, Professor. Hi. Come on up. Go get the meat. Back in a minute, Professor. <laughs> Hey, what's going on? Time. It moves like a maniac. I'm closing up. Oh, you can't do that. The professor I mean, we got a deal. If you want to knock off, knock off. I'll close up when we're through. That's what I like about free enterprise. I got the enterprise, and everybody's free to give me the business. And don't forget to turn the gas off under the onion stove. Oh, sure, George. Sure. I don't walk you home. Don't do me any favors. Cotty. Cotty. Now, what's wrong? Nothing. I just don't want to stand between you and your shells. You don't need a woman. You should go steady with a clam. I don't get it. A grown-up man and you still play with seashells. Now, you listen to me. When I get through at the end of the day, my head feels like it's been in a vice. These shells that you despise are my therapy. They relax me. If you were really concerned, you wouldn't resent this inoffensive hobby. Sam, you always have a way of making me feel so small. I, I could go right through the floor. I'm sorry. Really, I am. Good night, darling. Pleasant dreams. What's your reward? You're going to put George in the kitchen and put you on the cash register? I ain't interested in money. All I want is people to look up to me. Why? Could you make a better hamburger? What I am today has nothing to do with the future. Hitler was a paper hanger. Today, man makes his own destiny. Sometimes your thinking surprises me. Well, I got to be honest, Professor. I didn't think it up. I heard it. Quite for Mr. Gregory. When am I going to meet him? I guess when he feels the time's right. He's been telling me that for over a year. Obviously, Mr. Gregory's not very impressed. But he is. He told me so. Well, he's never told me. You know, he's missing out on a pretty good bet. There are lots of things that can't be written down on paper. How can I explain to you the secret of a new element that may obsolete the power of hydrogen force? There is such a thing? Well, that's part of the present project. You'll know that I can pick up the telephone and I can call the President of these United States and he'll speak to me as long as I want. And you and Mr. Gregory has no time for me. And I thought all you cared about was money. It ain't enough, is it? You want Mr. Gregory to pat you on the back. <laughs> well, if you dance with the gods, they can lead you into paradise. You know, I like the way you talk. I look up to you. But you got one weakness. The, uh, tomato? How can a big man like you get mixed up with a nothing like that? Can't come here just for these shells. It's only a front. What do you think? You sure had me fooled. You put on a good show. It's not too difficult. She's pretty attractive. They all are. And they're all out for what they can get. Do you know what I'd like to do to her? I'm not interested. Well, I am. Who does she think she is treating me like I was dirt? But I got ways of getting even. And believe me, I will.
forget that tomato. It's getting kind of late. I gotta get going. See you later, my friend. I could so. Part of you. Tell it to you, Mr. Shh, Don't be quiet. Tell it to you. Sam, I've been working all over for you. Keep your voice down. You, you, you don't understand. You know, we were in trouble. You're making something out of nothing. Professor Ranka disappears, and you call that nothing? You gotta stop using that word disappear. Huh? Everybody knows that he committed suicide. I know how you feel. It hurts a lot to lose a friend. But you mustn't blame yourself too much. Ronkers was sick from working too much. The mind is a very funny thing. All of a sudden, like that, he jumped off the boat. That happens. But there was nothing wrong with this mind. I ought to know. I just can't understand what happened. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I went fishing with him so many times. And the first time I rented your friend's boat, he disappeared into thin air. Do you think Perch had anything to do with it? He's just a poor, honest fisherman. I don't know what to think. All I know is when I got up that morning, I felt like I was drugged. And, and Max Ronka was gone. Well, why didn't you tell this to the police? Well, I, I couldn't do that, Sam. There'd have been more questions, further investigations. It might have led to us and, and, and what we're doing. I, the worst part of it is I, I tried to believe that Max Ronka had killed himself. I, I, I had to rationalize my guilt, but I'm not going to do it anymore, Sam. Supposing he didn't jump off the boat. Supposing he didn't kill himself. Where did he go? What happened to him? Sam, you don't really believe that Max Ronka committed suicide? Yes, I do. There is no other explanation. Well, I don't. Eighteen months ago, Professor Gerhardt from Northern University vanished. Then Ronka. Both men working on the same project. Both suicides. And not a single trace of their bodies. A coincidence? Oh, no. I, I tell you, they're not dead. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you like the way I talk when I try to get Ronka to join us, eh? Ronka laughed at me. He didn't want any part of this legion of misfits. But Mr. Gregory wanted him alive, not dead. Oh, and he made, his, he made up his mind to get him, too. Uh, uh, Sam, Sam, uh, they won't stop at anything. They preach liberty and practice slavery. But we can pull out of this. We'll face, we'll face the consequences. We'll go to the authorities. They'll help us. They, uh, no, 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 no. They're not the ones to fear. It's slob. It's slob. And it's Mr. Gregory. Shh. You don't, he's crazy. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Now, look. Look. We're on the right road. How can you justify treason? I tell you, he's crazy. Come on, Claude, simmer down. Sam, I, I, I don't understand you. With all the misery and bloodshed that they've caused already, you still believe you're right? Yes, and we've got to continue to fight for that right. Open your eyes, Sam. Open your eyes. We're helping the enemy, don't you see? But we're helping the enemy. We, we've got to expose them before it's too late. We trade us. We trade us. Shut up. Quiet. You just get a hold of yourself. It's getting late. I'm going to walk you home. We'll discuss this in the morning. It's better then. Everything looks better in the morning. He's passed out. Help me get him to it. You killed him. Did you want him to go to the authorities? He would. I've seen too many like him. Now there's nothing to worry about. You go on home and old Slob will take care of everything. You all right? Your message sounded so urgent. Why all the 
drama. Sam, they told me downtown before I can work for the government. I must swear loyalty to the United States. Why? Is that why you had me rush down here? Answer me. You can't be serious. I've never been more serious in all my life. Why must I swear allegiance? Well, for one thing, when our government hires somebody, they guarantee them the quality. The shape of your nose and the color of your skin has no bearing on your success or failure. Every individual is entitled to promotion based on an unbiased examination. And then when the job is over, there's more security in the form of a pension. Loyalty doesn't seem to be very much to give in exchange for that, does it? That answer your question? Sam, you're real smart. You know all the answers. But I'm getting smart, too. I'm learning all the time. Last night, I added a new word to my vocabulary. Traitor. Traitor. One who violates his allegiance and betrays his country. One who delivers his country to an enemy. One who aids an enemy to conquer his country. Last night, I heard you and Slav and Dylan. I heard Dylan beg you to stop what you were doing. He said you were traitors. And all you did was stand there and soft soap him. I wanted to listen to more, but I couldn't. I was so ashamed, I shut the door and got sick. Dylan was drunk. He didn't know what he was saying. Was Slob drunk? You said anything to Slob? Not yet, but I intend to. Now, uh, you keep away from Slob. He mustn't know that you saw us last night. Not a word, not a look. Now, promise me. That is more than shelter with Slob, isn't it? How could you get mixed up with that garbage pail? That's no concern of yours. Everything you do concerns me. Not this. Understand me? Not this. Sam, you're my heart. But I cut you out if you were a traitor. Are you? Get out. Listen to me. If you say one word of this to anybody, I'll kill you. So help me, I'll kill you. Are you sore at me or something? Leave me alone. I'm just tired. What a night. Those maniacs out there will eat anything that don't eat them first. I'll say. Look at my hands. They've been in the water so much today, they look like a couple of pink prunes. Look at those wrinkles. Tonight, I can't feel sorry for anybody. Well, I'd be glad to get to bed. You know, it's a shame. They shouldn't let women beat their brains out. You know what I think women ought to do? If you think of it, it must be gruesome. Hey, you got me all wrong. I got feelings, and I got respect where it's due. You smell good. What is it? Soap and water. Well, that's better than perfume. Perfume is like a tent on a beautiful woman. You know, I used to know a girl who mustn't smell like you. Boy, I was I crazy about her. You couldn't be crazy about anybody but yourself. Why are you so mean to me? You never give me a chance. Well, I like that. You make my life miserable. You pick on me. You're always pawing me. You want to know why I'm mean. Yeah, I guess you're right. But from now on, you ain't got nothing but respect, I swear. But you've got to treat me human. A little late for that. But if you mean it. Didn't I swear? A shake on it. Now, why couldn't you have been like this before? Things would have been so much nicer. Isn't it better when people are friends? Sure. But where do you find them? How many friends do you suppose a guy has in a lifetime? If he's got one, he's lucky. Well, you've got one now. Me. Hey, I had you pegged all wrong. You know what? Next payday, I'm going to buy you something real fancy. And, uh... Maybe we can go out and get dinner or catch a show or something, huh? Sure, that's okay by me. Especially now that I'm not going steady with a professor. You're kidding. Mm. When all this happened? The other night. I just couldn't take any more of his selfishness. That guy only thinks of himself and what he wants to do. That he wasn't more like you. You know, the girls like to be treated nice. More like guy thinks of his seashells. Yeah. When I first met the professor, I thought he was off his rocker. How He's did you a... meet him? Oh, on the beach. I guess it was before he came to work here. He was looking for shells, and we got to gabbing. 
Then I made a deal with him. I made a nice few bucks off of him. I'm glad you did. I would have done the same thing if I weren't such a dope. He taught me one thing. People can influence you. All it takes is somebody who's got just a little more brains than you've got. They can twist you around, and the first thing you know, you're doing things you never dreamed of. Like what? Mm, like my taking the civil service exam. Did he ever try to get you to do something you didn't want to do? No. We just talk about shells. I don't think the professor's my type, but let's not talk about him. Let's talk about us. Okay, Slob. Lay off. I thought you said we was going to be pals. What's a little kiss between friends? I mean it, Slob. Take your hands off me. Oh, you're hopeless. Gosh, you'll never change. You, uh, like my cooking? Not bad. You like me? I like I like garbage. Oh, you sure change your mind quick. Since when was you so choosy? I'm a man, ain't I? Who told you? I haven't seen the professor around lately. Is he sick? Hey, what's the matter? Have a beef? About what? I don't want to talk about it. It's all over between us. If that brain basket did anything to hurt you, I'll bust them in half. Oh, now look, honey, I know how you feel, but maybe it's better this way. People like you and me are just like bugs under a microscope as far as he's concerned. Once the experiment's over, down the drain we go. That's not true, George. I, I told him I never wanted to see him again. Say, you're smarter than I thought. Oh, George, I, I feel so bad. Well, now, honey, there's only one thing to do. Got to get yourself another boy. No, uh, I can't do the mambo. But you find an old-fashioned waltz, and I'll surprise you. You are so good. Everything you are is right on your face. What have I got to hide? That I love you? I'd put a neon sign on top of this shack so everybody on 101 would know. Better still, I'd back it up with a marriage license. No, I'm not too old. Got a little money. I'm not Mr. America, but my mother loves me, and we could use her ring. That's the trouble, George. I love you like your mother does. There's nothing wrong with you, George. It's me. I can't tell my heart who to love. But if you want me to marry you, I will. I'd do anything for you, George. Goodbye, Mary. Ah, oh, baby. I'm not one of those dopes who buys his cold wife a mink coat and then sits around waiting for her to warm up. It's got to be electricity in the beginning. No sparks. No fun. No fun. Georgie, how's my boy? And what's with the tea? Oh, wait till you see what I got here. I bet I can guess. Something that's dry that's gonna get wet. Is he smart? Oh, regular Mr. X-ray. Bring anything for me? Sure, for you I got my love. You better stop being so generous. Oh, when it comes to love, I'm a philanthropist. He's like a living gas station. He gives away air. Oh, Acapulco! Here we come. Ain't those things great? You know, I don't care what they cost. <laughs> How much? Uh, that salesman, you know what he did? He laid in an extra 10%. Yeah, well, I hope he spends it on penicillin. Uh, uh, uh. You know, these things are very tricky. You gotta really know how to use them. You know? Yeah. Watch 
Watch me. <laughs> Must be cheap rubber. <laughs> All right, come on. I can take care of myself. Well, what are you staring at? What do you do with these? Oh, here, I'll show you. <laughs> All you two need is a flying saucer. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Here, Eddie. <laughs> yeah, not me. Hey, what a beaut. Look at that spear. Boy, I bet this thing could go right through the building. Boom! Hey, read the instructions. Blue to one. Blue to one. How's it look out front? One to blue. I've got a clear shot from up here. Slob is at the far end of the dining room. Over. Blue to one. Gotcha. Continuing here. With all the other blanks we've drawn, I felt sure the bug or the phone in the booth would have given the department some kind of a lead. Well, the point of contact between Slob and Mr. Gregory's got to be here. At the bottom of the ocean, it's kill or be killed. Remember, we're invading the kingdom of the sea monsters. And we're looking for the pappy of them all, old Pancho, the Mexican terror. There is a legend that old Pancho once tasted human blood and loves it. Hey, George, look, let's take a loss and buy two fishing poles, huh? Catch old Pancho on a pole, he'd never go for it. Come on, we're going below. Well, what's wrong with staying on top? That's for cornballs. This is the new world. Well, if this is the new world, I'm going in the kitchen and take my life. Well, it's very decent of you, Slob. Be my guest. One to blue, one to blue. He started for the kitchen. Blue to one, got you. One to blue, one to blue. Over, over. Peace on earth, relax. Looks like he's staying put. Think you'll be much longer? Hurry. Boy, you're gonna pop at that ever-loving, warm Mexican water. But there's no air down there, man. You could drown. You're better off than the fish with these snorkels. Look, George, I don't want to spoil your fun, but I just can't get in the mood. I'll get you in the mood. Watch. See? It's as simple as that. It's even simpler. You just float around without a worry in the world. No beefs, no noise. It's just lousy with quiet. Hey, I like that, huh? <laughs> Do you think this could be Mr. Gregory? That's Mr. Gregory. I'm taking him single-handed. I mean, a fish at the bottom of the ocean ain't got more brains than both them put together. It hurts me to agree with you, but I think you're right. Hey, there's old Pancho. Look at him go. Four to one, Pancho gets him first. You couldn't even get a pigeon to take that bet. My clothes! My clothes! What a fish! He's all yours. Take it. I can't, George. Honest, I'm getting sick already. What are you scared of? It's just a broken down old fish. It'll go off. I, I can't touch it. It'll go off. How can it go off? Look, it's got a safety on it. See? Why, it's as safe as... Clean this mess up. 
Well, you get to do all the fishing and I got to do the dirty work, huh? What do you think? I hired you for your fancy French cooking? Hey, Georgie, you hurt? Only my dignity. Come on. Where'd you get those crazy sports shoes? <laughs> hey, Slob, so you won't have to make two trips. Take these the boxes and paper with you. Uh, it's a good thing I ain't wired. You'd be shoving me around like a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> hey, Cotty, this harpoon works like a million bucks. Boom! You should have seen George nail old Poncho. <laughs> How about a drink? Don't bend my arm. Looks like the wolves want meat tonight. <laughs> Two burgers fully dressed. Gotcha. Hey, look at this. Claude Dillon, university maintenance engineer, murdered. Mr. Dillon's mysterious disappearance a week ago was solved when his body was found in the bay this morning. Face. He used to come in here all the time. An autopsy disclosed the knife wound in the victim's back. You remember him, honey. He used to eat that banana cream pie all the time. Boy, I bet there'd be excitement up at the university tonight. Yeah, and he wasn't killed for his money. A wallet with 60 bucks was found on him. A knife in the back. What a lousy way to go. Yeah, I see. I bet he didn't have a chance. What's all the noise for? Look what happened to one of our customers. Who's that? Well, Professor Dillon from off the university. He got murdered. You know Mr. Dillon. Me? I never knew him. Sure you did. He used to come in here with the professor all the time. Maybe. I must have missed him. Hey, those burgers are burning. I wonder why anybody would want to kill anybody. A crazy world like this, you got to have a reason? Hey, it's Tuesday already. You want to go to market with me? Sure. Wait a minute, will I leave my car? Leave it here. I'll bring it back. Pick him up. Hey, Connie, you want to go along? Maybe we'll see an all-night show. Slot can close up early. I don't think so. I feel like I'm catching a cold. Well, if it ain't Moby Dick, where have you been? My truck broke down. All right, you're five minutes down the road. The fish could have walked. How long have they been in this basket? What difference does it make? Everything you serve is dead anyway. Hey, your chicken truck is blocking the entrance. I had to walk all the way around in the mud. So what? Nothing can hurt your canoes. All men are created equal. If Lincoln ever got a look at Perch, he never would have said that. George, when you quit burning, you ought to be glad it's raining. Why? Am I selling umbrellas or something? You read the evening papers? No, I... They found Dylan. I told you to weigh him down good. I did. I put those wires in a letter on him real tight. Look, he was so heavy, I could hardly lift him when I dumped him. He must have done a sloppy job, otherwise he wouldn't come up. I know my business. You know nothing. I'm telling you, I don't like it. I'll get out. Me eight even. I'll pay you next time. What's wrong with now? Look, if you can be late, I can be late. I hope you'll get fat on the interest. <sighs> that Abe Lincoln. What's the matter, Joe? Looks so good. Take a drink and go to bed, honey. I will. You take care of yourself. Next time we come, I want to see rosy cheeks and a pretty smile on your face. All kidding aside, we take a genuine interest in you. You take an interest in a lot of things around here. What do you mean by that, Craig? You figure it out. Lay off. Can't you see she don't feel good? Let's blow. So long. See you all around next see time. Be easy. No fever. Maybe it's your stomach. I'll tell you what, I'll bring you back something. Knock off. Slob, you can start closing up any time now. Sure. I guess you'll be asleep when we get back. Hope you feel better. I'll be all right. Goodbye, Eddie. 
Good night, Chicky. You and that loud music. What's the matter? Could you hear what I said? Look, the only thing I want to hear is the rattle of them dirty dishes. Now get them in the kitchen so I can finish up. Terrible about Mr. Dillon. He's such a nice guy. Every time a guy's dead, everybody says he's nice. Is he bad when he was alive? How would I know? You're a liar. You knew Dillon. Maybe I knew him, but I don't remember him. Quit he... acting. What's eating you? You'll find out. You crazy? Not as crazy as you and your pals. Truck drivers with soft hands sneaking around, meeting in your room. Oh, don't give me that innocent look. I saw them crawling out of your room tonight when I took my clothes off the line. Artie, Peppy in my room tonight? Why don't you phone the police? There's been a robbery. But I'll bet nothing's missing. Except a man's life. A bear that walks like a man. I know all about you. The professor, Artie, your secret meetings.
United Seafood were closed. A slob? What's the matter? Don't ask any questions. Get the boat ready. How soon can you get here? Well, I gotta refuel. It'll take a little time. We'll put enough gas in to get us to Mexican waters. Was it that bad? Bad enough. You know those two truck drivers from Acme Poultry? The tomatoes saw them tonight sneaking out of my room. I don't get it. There's nothing to get. They must be federal men. Federal men? What was the professor doing with them? The professor? Sam Bastian? Yeah. I was making my last delivery as I passed the gas station down at the fork. I saw them gabbing to get it. You think that... Don't think. Just get here as fast as you can. Anchor off the beach and sound your foghorn twice. Then run your dinghy up on the shore. I'll be waiting. <laughs> all about me, huh? Out. Get out of garbage pail. That's not what I want to hear. You got a big mouth. Now start using a tomato. Come on, I'm waiting. Wait till George gets back. Wait till I tell him what you're using his shack for. He'll chop you up to your hamster. That's not what I want to hear. Come on, talk. You don't want to talk, huh? I think I'm fooling with you, huh? <laughs> See what a nice guy I am. I gave you a chance to get away. I gave you two chances, but I'm not going to give you any more. Now, come on, talk. I'm not a patient man. What do you know? I know you're going to hang. And I know I'm going to last the day I raise you. Go on. Where did you get your permission? What did the professor tell you? Oh, <laughs> you. I think I'm fooling with you. When I say talk, I mean talk. Come on. Pals, huh? That's the way you talk to me. Close up so early. Well, George's orders. Boy, I thought I'd never make it. Had to come the inland route. Radio said it was a flash flood. Highway to San Diego was blocked off. There were two mountain slides on 101. Where's Connie? Well, she went to the market with George. Good. They're not going to be back for a while if they get back at all. Well, we're not going to need this or the shells. Surprise for you. How would you like to meet Mr. Gregory? When? Tonight. Off the coast of Ensenada, I rented the boat to take us there. I'm disappointed, Professor. You don't act the way I thought you would. Uh, don't be ridiculous. It's just that you should have let me know. I've got a faculty meeting tomorrow. I could have canceled it had I known. Well, everything happened so fast, I didn't have a chance to call. But, uh, 
We can make it some other time. Mr. Gregory will understand. No, no. I'll, uh... I'll call my houseboy and tell him to phone the university in the morning and tell him that I'm sick. Yeah. Why don't you do that? Does your houseboy wear? I bet he carries a gold-plated badge. Do you really think I let you make that call? I'm surprised you, huh? You surprised me, too. I never figured you. If you'd been a flag waver, a big doer, to play in the part of a mercenary. In the future, I'll watch out for your kind. I still owe you one belt on the common one you gave me for the tomato. Then I had to take it. It's part of the game. But now... <laughs> Especially since the tomato, the tomato told me about Artie and Peppy. That's how I found out about you. You knew they were from intelligence, but you wouldn't tell me. Artie and Peppy for intelligence? You're not with Slav? I'd rather be dead. That's what Professors Ronker and Gerhardt said. But they changed their minds under a little pressure, and so will you. You'll work together. <laughs> <laughs> and now, Tomato, I'm gonna get even with you. You're coming along with us. And somewhere in the waters of Mexico, I'm gonna feed you to old Pancho. I don't want to kill you, Professor, because I know how important you are to Mr. Gregory. Still, you force me. Hey, stop. You going crazy? Oh, come on, give me the gun. Give it to me, come on. Slob. It's me, George. He's not Slob. Uh, hi. Yeah, Mr. Gregory. I see no harm in admitting it, now that we're on our way. Hey, Slob, have you lost all your buttons? No, George, he's got all four feet on the ground. Can't you see what's happened? The apes have taken over. While we were busy watching television and filling our freezers, they've come out of the jungle and moved in. And what's worse is they've begun to dress like us and pretend to think like us. We're just where we were in the beginning. The animals have begun to hunt man. They are all apes. Every last one of them. But you're so desperate for security that you'll take any promise that vaguely resembles it. Well, I don't blame you for looking down at the apes. But you overlook one important factor. Their leaders are not apes. Now look now where the foreign government's just invaded our country and this is the beachhead. What have we ever done to you? Why do you want to change our lives? You got your own place, build it up, tear it down, and you want to eat each other, eat each other. Just leave us alone. Your lives are in jeopardy and you stand there arguing. George, get in there and close the door. And don't try anything or I'll blow the tomato's head off. Get over to the counter. Move! I thought I told you to get the police. You're wrong. Forget they are and get the police. Where? It's two miles to the nearest home. No cars on the road. Take me an hour to walk there. You're wrong. George, get in here. Had he begged me to stay in a motel with him tonight, wait till the storm was over, but I wouldn't listen. Here I am bleeding like a stuck pig, and he's sleeping like a baby. What a lousy break. That's not a lousy break, that's destiny. 
Man makes his own destiny, doesn't he, Professor? I'll make a deal with you. You leave Connie and George here, I'll go along and make no trouble. Don't make any deals with that garbage pail. I'd like to accommodate you, Professor, but unfortunately they know who I am. They'll have to come along. Where are we going? On a one-way cruise to Mexican waters. You dumping us? It's exactly what he plans to do. How do you like that? I was figured on getting old Poncho. Looks like old Poncho's gonna get me. Well, there's one consolation, George. Eddie can even an old score for you. All he'd have to do is get a hold of himself, put his hand on that harpoon and shoot someday. <laughs> Not that physical coward. No, your harpoon will have no use. That's a man's weapon. You're crazy. You think Eddie's chicken, but he's got more guts than you'll ever have. That's right, Cotty. Remember I used to tell you about D-Day? Omaha Beach was just running in blood, and Eddie waited right through all of it just to get to me. I wouldn't be here now if it wasn't for him. That took guts. Oh, don't waste your breath, George. Mr. Gregory doesn't understand your relationship with Eddie. Where he comes from, they annihilate their friends. He doesn't believe that Eddie had died for you, killed for you if necessary. Yes, even killed for you. time the professor was only playing a game. That's right. And me too. In the beginning, yes. But you had too much ammunition for me. <laughs> <laughs> 